Hello everyone and welcome to today's Academy on Air. My name is Charlotte and I'm an account strategist and automation specialist here at Google. Today we're going to be chatting about prepping for the festive season with a particular focus on automation and bidding. Quick look at our agenda for today. We'll do a brief recap of smart bidding and the different strategies that are available to us. And then we'll get into the bulk of the content for today, which will look at how to prepare for the festive season, the massive peaks we're going to expect over the next few months, particularly for retail. So why do we use smart bidding? Well, we use smart bidding to work faster, work smarter, and to win more. And when we chat about working faster and working smarter, this is all about harnessing the capabilities we now have in machine learning to make the best bid decision for the right person at the right time in any given auction. And that helps us to win more, to get the maximum potential out of our designated budgets. But what's crucial here is that we align our bidding strategies with our marketing goals. So whatever your business goal is, maybe it's an acquisition cost we must adhere to, maybe it's maximizing ROI, or maybe simply we just want to get as many sales through the door and maximize volume. Whatever that goal is will guide our decisions for our smart bidding strategies. But what are our options? Well, we really have four options available to us when we chat about managing our bids with smart bidding. And here's a brief look at them. We've enhanced cost per click, maximized conversions, target cost per acquisition, and target return on ad spend. So enhanced CPC or eCPC basically allows us to achieve more conversions whilst maintaining our max CPCs. So you will still have to manage your CPC bids, check in on them now and again to make sure that they're competitive and efficient enough, but it allows for a little bit of flexibility from auction to auction to capture more conversions. Moving to maximize conversions, this does exactly what it says on the tin. We look to drive as many conversions as possible within our specified budget. So using that budget in the most efficient way to maximize volume. Target cost per acquisition. This is where we look to attain, again, as many conversions as possible, but whilst also maintaining a target CPA. And target ROAS then, last but not least. Target ROAS allows us to get the highest conversion value possible at a specific target ROAS that, we spend, that we've set. So looking to maximize your value there, but keeping efficiency with your ROI goals. But what's really important to note as well when we're choosing a strategy to use is the potential here for ROI. And you'll see that we have manual bidding and enhanced CPC on the left hand side here grayed out to a certain extent as they are still manual strategies that tie us to a set CPC. And when we restrict ourselves to that set CPC, our ROI potential is lower because it's set. However, when we look to the right hand side more towards our fully automated strategies, the likes of maximize conversions, target CPA and target ROAS, that is where we really unlock the ROI potential because we focus on more strategic metrics at hand here, whether it's volume, acquisition cost, or return, that allows us to unlock the highest potential for your strategies. But now you've chosen a bid strategies, you know your marketing goals, we're coming into the most important season of the year for retail. How can we set ourselves up for success to make this the best few months of your calendar? So there's three things we really see during uh, the festive season that really change the market as we know it. The first of all being increased traffic. More people are searching for products, they're looking to buy, they're looking to research products. So the traffic there increases a lot. A knock-on effect from that, we see increased conversion rates and conversion value. So people are more likely to buy at a higher rate and also buy more, particularly, particularly around this Black Friday Cyber Week frenzy where people feel like they're getting a bargain. They're more likely to actually spend more around that season as they feel like they're getting a good deal. And finally, all of this results in increased competition. So as more and more businesses want to take a slice of the pie and take advantage of that opportunity, increased, uh, increased competition 
most definitely happens within the market. So this poses a challenge to us as businesses, as marketers. How do we pre prepare our smart bidding strategies, such as target CPA, target ROAS, maximize conversions, for seasonal increases in traffic or conversion rates? So this peak that's about to come up for us, how are we going to set ourselves up for success with our bidding strategies to maximize the potential there? And the typical example that I will allude to during this uh, presentation is Black Friday or Cyber Week. So like a week long sale, for example. We're going to cover two scenarios in particular. The first will be if we expect a large traffic increase to our site. So we expect a huge influx of traffic, more and more people coming to our site. And the second scenario is if we actually expect conversion rates themselves to change. So looking at scenario one, we expect a large traffic increase to the website. If this is the case, and if conversion rates don't change drastically, no action is needed. Our smart bidding strategies are more than capable of recognizing this increased volume and adjusting as needed. In fact, they'll only be benefited by the, the, by the excess of volume. So the more volume, the better for smart bidding. What you can do here and what's very important throughout is to make sure that our budget isn't capped so that we're capturing the full opportunity of that increased volume. In addition to that, there is scope for you to relax targets on target CPA and target ROAS to get you more volume through during this, this season. Now we'll go through that in a little bit more detail down the line. But the key message here is that if we don't expect a massive conversion rate change, and we just see an influx of volume, we are more than set up for that. Smart bidding can allow for those um, changes. Scenario two, we expect conversion rates to change. Now again, I'm going to break this down into two subcategories, two types of seasonal trends we will see over the peak, and that will be longer trends of three plus days, most businesses will fall into this bracket whereby they may do a cyber week or a cyber weekend sale and that will cover three plus days. But in some cases, we'll have a short spike, which will be the second category we'll discuss. And a short spike would be anywhere between 24 to 48 hours, where maybe it's simply a 24 hour flash sale on Black Friday alone. And that would be a slightly different scenario that we'll cover today as well. We will have time for Q&A at the end. If anyone has questions, please type them in. We'll get to that shortly. So looking at longer trends of three plus days, this is where we would see gradual increases in conversion rates over the festive season. So as I mentioned, it could be the case of a cyber weekend or a cyber week sale where those conversion rates and the influx of traffic starts to come in gradually. In which case, no action is needed. The conversion rate will be gradual and smart bidding will be allowed, will allow those changes to come into play as needed. So no immediate action is required. However, we can make slight adjustments, as I mentioned before, to target CPA and target ROAS, depending on your marketing goal. So if we're looking to get more volume through, what's crucial here is that we look at potentially increasing our CPA target or decreasing our ROAS target to allow for more volume to come through, which will often result in much better performance overall. Secondly, we're going to look at short spikes. So again, 24 to 48 hours, the kind of typical scenario here would be if you do a Black Friday sale, no cyber week, just one day, 24 hour sale. In most cases, no action is, is required as smart bidding again is now more than capable of adjusting to these short term scenarios. We will need to make a couple adjustments if conversion rates change drastically. And that's what we're going to look at now. So if it is a short spike, you have a 24 hour sale, a short spike that has very sudden and drastic changes with conversion rates, then we will need to make a few adjustments. So we have an example here that we expect our conversion rate to change from two to 4%, in which case that's actually a double of the conversion rate that it usually is. In this scenario, we would need to make adjustments to our target CPAs and our target ROAS targets to allow 
the bidding algorithms to adjust for this increase in conversion rate. So because the, the spike happened so quick within such a short um, time frame, we will need to make a little bit of an adjustment because the bidding algorithms may see or predicted conversion rate still is 2% and may not have time to adjust to that new 4%. So if you do expect this to happen for your peak, do take some action and adjust our targets. So in this case, a suggestion of our target CPA multiplied by two as our target, or reducing our target ROAS by half. And what that would do is allow us to adjust to the 4% conversion rate and also allow more volume to come through to capitalize on that opportunity for that sudden spike. Let's chat a little bit about target ROAS. So target ROAS is a fantastic strategy, particularly for e-commerce retailers. When we look at the likes of shopping, it's one of our most efficient strategies there. And how are we gonna set ourselves up for success in the biggest shopping period of the year? The main message here being, we don't need to revert back to manual or eCPC bidding. We absolutely can use our smart bidding strategies. They're more than capable of adjusting to peak and you will get the maximum performance by using them. But let's look at a few of the potential goals here for target ROAS and the action recommended off that. Our first goal might be to take advantage of the opportunity and drive the highest conversion value possible. So we're looking to maximize our conversion value throughout this peak period. In that scenario, what we would look to do is increase our budget to the maximum you're willing to spend. So what is the maximum budget threshold you have to spend at this time to capture the maximum volume and demand that will be coming through at this time? And we'll chat about that a little bit more, but what's crucial to, to note here is that this is a massive time of the year where a lot of acquisition happens. So this is a period of actual investment in terms of your customer acquisition, be it with new customers or amongst your existing customer base, maxima maximizing the acquisition of them for lifetime value. So budget is important here that it's not capped that we can maximize that opportunity for ourselves. In addition to this, we also may decrease our ROAS goal to make sure we're allowing for more volume to come through during the peak. Goal number two, we want to take advantage of the opportunity while keeping a similar ROAS. So our ROAS goal is strict, we need to stick to that. In which case, again, we need to make sure we've headroom in our budget to, to allow for that increased demand. And we'll keep our ROAS goal the same or slightly decrease it, minimally about five to 10% if you can. Why we would do that is because it's important to remember that CPCs are likely to increase here as the festive season causes competition to intensify. So CPCs and competition are likely to go up. So if we can relax that ROAS goal slightly, it will benefit us for volume. Final goal here, we want to take advantage of the increased demand, but our budget is limited. We absolutely do not have any excess budget to add in. It is capped and fixed. It's an unfortunate scenario during this time of the year as we do see it as a key investment period, but sometimes it is the case. And if so, what you would look to do there is actually raise your ROAS target. And the reason that would be is so that you can focus on the most efficient volume coming through. So making sure that that budget is being used in the most efficient manner to maximize our return. But do bear in mind there that you'll, you'll sacrifice a little bit of volume. So how do we know if we need to make an adjustment? If we're using target CPA, if we're using target ROAS, how do we actually know if we should be adjusting our targets this year for peak season? Well, this is gonna come down to just analyzing previous results you've had. So think back to Black Friday 2017 last year, or maybe a particular seasonal peak you've had throughout the year, maybe another flash sale you've had during the year, and go into your Google Ads account and assess the results there. Look at the metrics and see, was it the case we just saw increased volume coming through? Was that also matched with increased conversion rates? Or what was affected? What was the behavior there that we need to prep for this time around? When we have that information, and if we feel we do need to make some adjustments, when is the ideal time to adjust our target CPA or our target ROAS targets? 
Well, you'll see here in the illustration, the recommended timing is right before the peak. So it'll really be key to change those targets just as the, the conversion rates are beginning to deviate from their average. So as they begin to peak and they begin to spike, right before that, we will change our targets. And similarly, when we're coming out of that peak, as things begin to slow down and we come back more towards our average conversion rates, then you'll move back to what they were previous to the peak. But one really crucial thing here is to understand our conversion lag. And this is a very important element when it comes to making adjustments to our targets, when it comes to target CPA and target ROAS. You'll find this tool in your Google Ads account in search attribution, where you'll be able to see a time lag report, also known as days to conversion. It could be considered your consumer journey or your conversion lag, the time from click to conversion. In this particular case here, you'll see on screen, it's about 10.38 days. And the reason this is important to understand what your days to conversion and your conversion lag is, is because on average, it'll take one conversion cycle at least to adjust for performance changes that will result from seasonality. So for example, say if you had a conversion lag of two days, if that was the case and you were to make adjustments to your target CPA or target ROAS prior to peak, in an ideal situation, you do that at least two days prior to the beginning of the peak. And that would allow for the bidding strategies to go through one conversion cycle and adjust as needed. Critical here, I spoke about it a lot already, but the trade-off between volume and value per conversion is really, really important when it comes to seasonal events. In an ideal situation, we want to capitalize on volume during this period, as the demand coming through will be in far excess of what it is on an average day of the year. So allowing small adjustments there to relax target CPA and target ROAS goals will allow for more volume coming through. In the opposite situation, if we were to set very ambitious ROAS goals or target CPA goals, whereby we'd have a particularly high ROAS or a particularly low CPA, it would be expected there that we trade off a little bit of volume as the bidding strategies have to work harder to stick to those efficiency goals. So for these seasonal events where we're looking to focus on that increased demand and acquire as many customers as possible, it's important to, to stick on the volume side and making sure we're, we're not limiting ourselves there. We spoke about target ROAS and we spoke about target CPA, but we can't forget about the brilliant maximized conversions. So when it comes to maximized conversions, it's quite often a strategy that's used for budget capped campaigns. And in which case we've no particular targets to change coming into peak as maximized conversions will just use the entire budget to maximize volume. But we still do need to make a couple of adjustments prior to that peak season to make sure we're getting the most out of the strategy. And that's going to come down to budget. It's going to look to increase budget as much as we can and as much as we can afford to make sure we're getting maximum performance during that peak with maximized conversions. If our budgets are limited, we'll miss out on a seasonal opportunity. And it might be the case where your budgets are not limited day to day, but if coming into peak and we're experiencing increased demand and increased competition, they may be limited in that sense. So do have a budget revisit and make sure that they're at a healthy level, level to capture all of the demand that's out there. And with that in mind, don't let a low budget get in the way of a great smart bidding event. This is a time of investment in your audiences to acquire new customers, to maximize the potential from your existing customers. And the lifetime value of those customers is invaluable. So make sure you have enough budget for the event. Make sure your campaigns are not restricted and so that our smart bidding campaigns can reach the, the full of their potential. Thank you very much. We have a few moments left for some Q and A. So let me have a look here. Okay, I have one here. Is it good to use automated bidding strategy at the start of a campaign? 
Ideally here, you can use a bidding strategy at the, the start of a campaign, absolutely. What is important though, is that we've conversion tracking set up at an account level. So your conversion tracking is set up properly and it's recording the right things. That's important so that your bidding strategies are optimizing towards the right goals and that we can measure the efficiency of it. Again, it's, it's crucial that we have a bit of history in that conversion data. So even if it's not at the new campaign, but maybe you have existing campaigns in the account that are optimizing towards the same, the same conversion action. That conversion data that's existing in the account will benefit things for your new campaign to learn from. Now, in an ideal situation, what you'd look to use is the likes of a maximized conversions bidding strategy and not setting a set target CPA or a set target ROAS at the start of a campaign. And that is because we need to find out the natural CPA or the natural ROAS of a campaign before setting a target for it. So if you're starting off a new campaign, before peak, I'd recommend doing it as soon as possible so that it's time to ramp up by the time peak comes about. I would also recommend a maximized conversion strategy to start off with. Once we get volume through that campaign, we have some conversion data to analyze. We can then assess our CPA or our ROAS target and then move to one of those strategies. Hope that helps. I have another question. Is maximized conversions a good choice for small e-commerce accounts? When is the budget not enough for target CPA? So essentially here, all the bidding strategies are created to be scalable. So from the smallest to the largest e-commerce retailer, they can be used. They absolutely can. And we would encourage you to do so. When it comes to maximize, or excuse me, when it comes to budget for target CPA, What's really, really important to note is that target CPA and also target ROAS as a bidding strategy don't work as efficiently as possible with the limited by budget campaign. And the reason that is, is because they need to have room to grow. They need to have room to grow the conversions at that CPA or at that ROAS. So if you're limited by budget, it will just limit the performance there. So in an ideal situation, if you're using target CPA or target ROAS, an uncapped budget is important. When the budget is not enough for target CPA, you'll see in your Google Ads account. And what I would look at there is at a campaign level, assessing the budget. Um, you'll quickly know if, if it's limited by budget, if, if it has the red limited by budget flag on the campaign. If that is there, it's limited by budget in which case maximize conversions would be a better option. You can also use the competitive metric. You'll find that if you add in a few columns in your Google Ads account um, for competitive metrics, the one you'd look at is lost impression share due to budget. And if you're losing a lot of impression share due to budget, that's a good signal that you're limited by budget, in which case target CPA probably isn't the best fit you would look to use for maximize conversions. It tends to work better with limited by budget campaigns. How would you decide whether to use maximize conversions or maximize clicks for a campaign? What that's going to come down to is your goal. Is your goal click volume? Do you want as much traffic to the site? Or is your goal conversion volume? Do you want as many sales as possible? Quite often, more often than not, conversions is the main goal. We're going to want to maximize our leads or maximize our sales coming through, in which case maximize conversions will help you focus on maximizing those sales or leads within your given budget. And it'll be more, I guess, focused on getting that quality traffic to, through that will convert as opposed to just traffic. Maximize clicks will do exactly what it says maximize your click volume through a campaign. So if it's a case you just want to get as many visitors to the site, that might be a good option, but more often than not, we'll want conversions. Why do you recommend reducing target ROAS even if there's no change in conversion rate? So that was the case where if we see maybe a longer trend over three plus days and no drastic change in conversion rate, why would we still recommend reducing our target ROAS? Or I think the other side was increasing our target CPA. The reason that would be is if you can allow for a little bit of um, 
relaxation really within those targets, you can allow for more volume to come through and capitalize on more of that demand. So it's coming back to that scale we had of volume versus um, value per conversion. The more we relax those to a certain extent, we will get more volume through. Of course, you're going to want to keep within a, a goal that's efficient for your business, but with the excess volume coming in as well, that'll likely help things. I think that's all we have time for today. So I thank you very, very much for joining us today and wish you a great day. Bye.